Let's go back and talk about the weather because Zach Green has been following Dorian and the potential impacts, and it certainly has been changing over the last 24 hours. Absolutely. In fact, we've been tracking this for the past two, even three days, and it's going to be part of our conversation for upwards of a week from here on out. At this point, this is the latest information from the 11 p.m. update, the National Hurricane Center. 150 mile per hour max sustained winds, gusts much higher than that, but there was at least some recon information from the flight that passed through the storm to show you that in the bottom 150 meters of this, they were getting gusts of maybe 157 miles per hour. That would make it a Category 5, but it's still registered as a Category 4 for the time being. The track hasn't wavered much, but there's been somewhat of a little notch to the west. And if that's the case, it seems to be more of an impact for the Florida coastline. So again, not a direct hit. And it seems to be that most of the concern does stay offshore for the Florida Peninsula, but a big, big issue for those folks in the Bahamas. They just can't seem to escape it. So that's going to be in the next 24 to 36 hours. It seems to make that rather harsh northern turn as we move into Tuesday. So this is past Labor Day at this point, and it's going to remain within that Category 2 to Category 3 strength as it continues to ride up the East Coast into South Carolina, as well as eventually the Outer Banks in North Carolina. That's if this ultimately does verify. There is still a chance that it makes an inland pass. So we have to keep a very, very close eye on that system. But everything here locally looking up. Mainly clear skies as we finished up our day. There were a few clouds here and there, but everybody remained dry. And that's how we finished up the month of August. There was a slight surplus for the month as a whole. We just got above the seasonal average. But that being said, we were rather soggy for meteorological summer. Yes, that is the three months of June, July, and August. Tomorrow starts meteorological fall. Fall doesn't officially start, obviously, until that autumnal equinox in late September. But as of now, looking relatively quiet on the last three-hour loop, seeing some of those fair weather, high-altitude clouds somewhat blanketing our region. Overall, not going to deal with much activity through the overnight hours and for tomorrow. For tomorrow, in fact, as we go from the morning to the evening, the dew points are going to remain relatively low, so our temperatures fall back into the low 50s in some spots overnight. Tomorrow afternoon, expecting to be back into the low and mid 70s. We will be increasing the clouds in the later parts of the day ahead of our next rain chance, which really does impact us for the holiday itself. This ridge of high pressure that has stayed in command for the past 48 hours starts slipping off to the east. We will introduce that energy coming out of the west and it will force the moisture into the lakes and the mountains as we go into the morning hours. By the time the afternoon and the evening rolls around, we start to see it slip off to the southeast. So for those in the Cape and the islands, not totally totally out of the woods, but thankfully more dry hours than soggy ones as we go into Monday. By Tuesday, everything seems to be wrapping up. We're back into the sunshine in the afternoon with the low 80s returning. Wednesday, you'll feel the humidity, so 85 degrees may feel more closer to 90. If you wanted the summer heat, enjoy that while you can because we fall back off. 70 on Thursday, 60s for highs by the end of the week. It's almost time to take the air conditioner out of the window. I know. I've been opening up my window, letting that breeze pull in, so it's feeling quite nice. All right. Thanks so much, Zach.